Hey everybody, thanks for joining me uh, for your forecast. We work week forecast for March 27th through the 31st. Uh, sorry about the uh, sound is not quite what it normally is today. Um, uh, my lapel mic broke on me or died on me, so I will be getting a new one of those, so that should help uh, coming up here soon. But did want to give you a forecast. Hopefully things, uh, I can work it with the software to make it look uh, sound decent. Um, in terms of what's going on, a couple things I'm going to talk about today. We have a relatively busy pa weather pattern today, including a little bit of snow for this evening. It'll start off as kind of a mix of rain and snow or a little bit of snow for this evening. Um, uh, some snow squalls on Wednesday evening and then the potential for a uh, looks like a start as snow, maybe some sleet and then mixed to rain storm uh, for Friday into Saturday. That one's a little too far out to have details on yet. But also wanted to talk briefly about so on Facebook and had a couple of questions uh, directed to me um, about uh, a really intense lightning strike that happened uh, mostly it was from people down in the Jamaica the New Fane area um, woke them up in the middle of the night um, I didn't hear it in South London Dairy where I am um, but uh, I'm going to talk about what I think happened there and why it was much more intense than your average running mill thunder clap and uh, yeah so uh, as we look at satellite imagery here's our storm for today um, way back there was uh, this pattern wanted to develop a big coastal storm with a big snowstorm for us uh, sometime early in the week. This is sort of what ended up happening out of it. Everything, never, nothing is ever coming together all together at the same time. We've still got this energy stayed uh, hung back a little bit. We didn't even consolidate all of the subtropical jet energy. But this system here is going to develop a little bit. And it will give us, um, as we head towards evening, even though it's sunny now, we will get cloudy throughout the day. And uh, we will actually be, uh, by evening, a little bit of light snow. Not anything that's going to be too dramatic, but a little bit of light snow as we head through the evening. I'll have a snowball map for you later. I'll have some details for you. In terms of what happened um oops before we get to the thunderstorm stuff or uh, the thunderclap um here's your radar you can see we are chilly uh, we cooled down overnight with especially those clear skies down into the low 20s we will get up well above freezing again today with the sun this morning um so whatever starts um early on probably starts as rain especially for the lower elevations the highest elevations may start as snow but as the system heads offshore we get and, and we lose uh, heating of the day um, we will change over to a little bit of snow and the higher elevations basically about a thousand feet gets a chance for a little bit of accumulation and uh, when i say a little bit of accumulation we're talking about an inch or two this is not a big storm it's not anything that you're gonna really have to worry about but it is there so um, yeah we're just going to keep an eye on that uh, behind that we will eventually move a front across uh, and i'll show you that uh, on a different map that will uh, bring some snow squalls on wednesday uh, probably uh, around uh, between about 6 and 8 p.m on wednesday evening i would say those could be briefly intense but uh, they will not bring with them uh, they could bring a dusting to an inch but it could happen very quickly so anyways um let's take a look at what i think happened with uh the thunderstorm or the, with the thunderclap the other day in uh, jamaica and down in new Fane. now uh, because it happened in the middle of the night um i didn't i was actually able to go back my lightning data only goes back like six hours or so so not 100 percent positive this is what happened but there's two types of lightning strikes but that's had more than Two types of lightning strikes but cloud to ground lightning which is when lightning um uh, when a lightning strike goes from the cloud to the ground or it actually can go either direction doesn't uh, entirely matter and it usually actually bolts go both ways but uh anywho um it's uh they can be uh, there can be what are called negative strikes and positive strikes and what that means is a negative strike um uh the uh charge that's transferred to the to the earth is negative um it makes the charger at the earth give uh uh, negative and a positive strike it transfers positive charge to the to the earth because uh, really charge uh, it doesn't really matter if you're going from negative obviously electricity flows from negative to positive but uh, it doesn't really matter um, in terms of uh, uh, it's about charge dif dis difference not about um whether it's a positive then it doesn't that doesn't entirely matter what matters though is usually lower layers of th thunderstorms are uh, have a negative charge in general to them um or, or sorry yeah heavy uh and so they transfer that to the ground whereas the higher uh, parts of the thunderstorm have a more positive charge to them uh generally and so what happens is a positive strike if i come over here often comes now this was not an anvil strike they, those are a type of lightning strike that is usually a positive strike um but because they're much higher up in the atmosphere, a uh, negative strike might only come from five to 10,000 feet in elevation. That's a, you know, a couple of miles. Um, you have to ionize all that air. Uh, it takes a certain charge difference in order to do that. Now a positive strike, now the other night we did not have clouds that were 60,000 feet high, but sometimes out in the plains, these can be 60,000 feet. 
Um, so in order to, it's this, you have to end, it's also usually through more clear air because often there's not anything going on underneath this uh, weather-wise. And so this means that you're transferring, in order to do that, you have to have a much greater charge distance, which actually means these lightning strikes do carry more energy and they transfer more charge, more amperage, all that kind of stuff. Um, and they are more intense. They also tend to last a little bit longer um, than uh, these strikes do. So, um, and they're also a little more, so these are pretty rare, less than 5% of it lightning strikes, as best we can tell. There's about a decent amount of research on this, are positive strikes, uh, but they are more likely during winter storms. So here, let me, I got a chart for you that kind of explains this. Uh, I think it was likely a positive lightning strike. Positive strikes are less than 5% of all strikes. Positive strikes carry a greater charge and move more energy. They are most often come from clouds much higher in the atmosphere and winter storms have a higher percentage of a positive lightning strike. So I think that's what happened. That's why it seemed much more intense. Uh, these are also your most likely uh, lightning strikes to happen in clear air because they, the top of the lightning can, of, of the thunderstorm can be tilted over uh, at an angle and that gives it a much more likely uh, chance that it, would, that it would strike somewhere when it was not really even that cloudy out there. They... Percentage-wise, they don't actually kill more people, but percentage-wise, they are much deadlier, mostly because they happen when you're not expecting a lightning strike, and the extra energy means that even if you're standing somewhere nearby, it creates a much higher chance that you get um, uh, hit with light, hit with a charge that's enough to cause some sort of injury to yourself that or death. So, anyways, they're dangerous. Um, they're pretty rare. There's not really any way to know when they're going to happen, um, uh, except for that uh, winter storms are more likely for them to happen in. And even though that wasn't really a winter storm, the fact that it was cool aloft kind of um, made that a little bit more likely the other night. So I think that's what happened. It was interesting. Uh, not something you should worry about happening too, too often in the future tonight. Okay, so as our system kind of wraps up offshore here tonight, it will wrap back in just enough cold air as we lose the heating today that we will see snow for a lot of us across New England and particularly southern Vermont. Um, the lower elevations won't see really any accumulating snow even though there will be some snow in the air, the higher elevations definitely get a little bit of accumulation later on in the week. Here is our Wednesday storm. You can see a storm's going to go well lower north, and it's going to sweep an Arctic front through. And out ahead of that front, um, very much like a line of thunderstorms, except it should be probably mostly snow. Um, uh, and uh, there could even be a run of thunder with this line. It's pretty intense. It could briefly, in half an hour, we could get an inch of snow in a spot if you get one of these real heavy squalls. This could be, it's late enough in the evening that it's kind of after. Most people should be home from driving home from work. But this is the kind of... Uh, squall line that could be potentially dangerous. It's much more dangerous out west across uh, upstate New York. It looks like the timing will be worse in terms of travel. Also, there's more highways and stuff. This is the kind of stuff if you're driving on a highway that can be extremely dangerous where you go from perfectly clear visibility to all of a sudden can't see anything. Um, it's the kind of thing where if you run into one of those squalls, you should get off the road. And I mean way off the road because uh, the chance for like big pileups is, is, is very high in this kind of system. Not so much of a problem in Southern Rome. We don't have any interstates. I mean, 91, you can have that on it. 91 is not exactly a busy interstate highway. So anyways, but uh, yeah, uh, let's head to Friday. Here's the setup on Friday. Storm well to our west, warm front headed in our direction. This is probably overdone with how wide the snow swath will be on the front end of this. But basically an area of snow before we probably change, maybe to a brief period of mix and probably rain, I think, as we head through the night on Friday. So let's take a look quickly at... Uh, the precipitation or the snowfall for this evening, I think generally up to an inch, a coating to an inch uh, for the foothills, areas between maybe 750 feet and 1,500 feet, above 1,500 feet in general, one to two inches of snow. So, you know, again, this is not a big snowmaker, uh, maybe just slightly more snow than we got uh, the other day. A um, little bit, not as much sleep though. This will be mostly either rain or snow. Valleys basically stay um, just a, just basically uh, no accumulation, just some snow in the sky as things head out. And this will happen overnight. So quite frankly, by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, a lot of this will probably be gone. Anyway, um, as we head through your five-day forecast, uh, we're in the low 40s today after starting off in the 20s. Wintry mix, a brief wintry mix this evening. Uh, that'll actually, won't be a lot of sleep. This will either be, it'll be rain that changes to snow um, as we go through. Um, Temperatures dropped about freezing tonight. Tomorrow we're back up in the 40s. Wednesday's a nice day, really nice day. Good sugar day on Wednesday. Temperatures start in the mid-20s uh, as we top out in the 40s, although some of the valley locations where the snow is gone are uh, getting pretty close to the end of sugaring season. Decent amount of it still up here in the hills. But uh, here's our brief heavy snow, and it'll be brief, probably not more than a coating to an inch or two in spots with the passage of that front, and a lot of places won't see that 
but um, it will be briefly heavy. That will come all very quickly. Half an hour to 45 minutes, you might get an inch, inch and a half of snow uh, in a really heavy burst. Thursday's breezy and cold. Feels a bit wintry on Thursday with temperatures getting up, uh, not even making it to freezing, and wind chills probably in the teens all day on Thursday. Friday, chilly again on Friday in general, um, out ahead of that next uh, wintry mix situation uh, before it looks like once the warm front moves through, it looks like we will warm up and probably be just plain rain on Saturday. Let's take one last quick look at your work week highlights. A bit of a mix uh, to snow this evening uh, into the overnight. A line of snow squalls Wednesday evening with briefly heavy snow, a little accumulation, although maybe a minute or two. Uh, seasonably cool on average this week, especially Thursday is cool. Wednesday, windy will, oh, windy on well below average temperatures and well below average temperatures, that's to say, on Thursday and Friday overnight, snow to rain likely. All right, that's your forecast. I will be back on Friday with a look at your weekend forecast. Details on this Friday storm by then. If the Friday storm starts to look more impactful, I might have a forecast for you on Thursday. You should subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's how you'd make sure that you wouldn't miss that storm forecast. Um, also, I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons who help support what I do here and uh, just uh, appreciate them. And uh, they get a forecast. They'll get that weekend forecast on Wednesday. So if you're interested in that, just check, uh, click on the link in the description below. And it gives you information on what it means to become a patron. All right. Thanks. I'll be back on Friday, if not. Tomorrow.